All right, shalom. Welcome back to the codesearcher.com. I am Jonathan, the code searcher. And today we're going to be talking about um, the Passover season. Many of you know we're in that right now, that very season. So some are uh, celebrating a little earlier than others, but that's okay. The point is we're keeping these feasts, okay? But before we get into that teaching, guys, I want to catch up with you on um, the code, personal code searches. And kind of let you in on, on some um, new information, something that um, we've decided to do um, with the new website that we're building. All right. So I told you we're going to do this all of um, April, and it looks like we're going to have to go a little further than that, rather the response that we got out of that. Listen, if you emailed me, I got your email. Don't worry about that, okay? You don't have to email me four or five times um, because it does make it a little more difficult and confusing for me. Here's the thing. I really opened up a can of worms when I did this and, and should have been a little more organized. And that's why we're going to do something on, over on the website and have it a little more streamlined with you guys. Because what's happened was uh, with all the requests, um, I got multiple emails. And so it has taken me quite a while to sort through all of those to get my list together. I have a ledger with all of your names okay so do not worry if you emailed me and especially if you donated your name is on the list okay so uh it's going to take me some time to get through those but what i'm doing is i'm working on them through batches uh just let me do a screen share so i can show you i got five in front of me right now if it'll let you see this, let's see. Yep, I think it's gonna show that. I got five um, that I'm working on in front of me that, that are new now. Um, that's first and last name on each one of those. I work each one of these up to a certain point and then push them to the side and then I get another batch and, and push them to the side. And my plan is to get them all up to the video point, uh, to that point. So I could do all of those at the same time. So a little confusion uh, in the beginning, but I am not complaining. You guys are uh, absolutely amazing in your uh, love for me and for what we do here at this ministry. And you guys, um, I see what it's doing in, in the practical application for this. And so you has actually inspired me to do something different in this new season. And that is encourage you guys as much as I can. And, and I know that I can do that in by showing you where you belong in the book of life, okay? So we're going to integrate this. Hear me now. It's not going to be just April. We're going to make this a permanent thing. We're going to integrate this into the ministry. And what I mean by that with the students in, in the new uh, format with um, teaching students, the way I am going, one of the methodologies I'm going to use to teach them how to be effective code searchers, because the primary thing code searchers or new students want to do when they come in is find themselves in the codes. Okay, so we're going to do this. I'm going to teach these students how to find anybody, not just themselves, anybody in the codes. Okay, in the book and, and bring them on board as a teaching apparatus, your names. So we'll be working in teams doing personal codes um, to encourage you because when you guys see where you are in the codes, it may speak volumes to you. I know when I did a personal code for my best friend, JD, many of you know who passed away um, a couple of years ago. I didn't do a code before he died. Um, and I was very blessed by doing the code afterwards because it was all in the songs, in the very play, in the very verses that he cherished. And I thought that is amazing. I wish I could have given to him uh, before he passed away. But I know now, uh, you know, he's fully aware of uh, where he is and where he belongs in your kingdom. So I want to do that for you as well. And so I'm going to be using your names and some of your information um, to give back and to teach these students how to be good code searchers. Um, it's one thing to search codes and look for, you know, historical events, things that are yet to happen, or even reconciling the word using the codes because the Bible interprets itself. And I personally believe this is why the codes are there in the first place, is to reconcile the Father's word, okay? 
So uh, we'll, we're going to build up to that as more advanced knowledge. But the primary thing we're going to focus on, you guys, is teaching you how to find someone in the codes and blessing them with that information. Now, here's what I want to do in, in this teaching that I got for you today. Normally, in this season, I'd be teaching about the calendar uh, because, because of the circumstances. Um, I am not doing that right now. Out of respect for my brother, and, and uh, I'm in his... Um, his ministry here. I'm not going to post anything contradicting. All right. So uh, for those that are curious, I am observing both of the Shabbats, both um, the fixed and the lunar. So, but this season that we're in, Passover, um, normally I would be teaching you about, you know, the very first Passover, the Exodus and you know, how all that came about, what the purpose of the Exodus um, story is, uh, is more than just about these Hebrews leaving Egypt. It's about being delivered from bondage and the sacrifice our Savior did for us. He saved us from the bondage of death. If you didn't know that, that is what he saved us from, right? Okay, so we're going to focus on that story, which you can find in the Brit Hadashah and the book of Metayahu. And in some of Paul's writings in uh, 1 Corinthians, we'll, we see that, that even the early believers were still keeping um, this, these feasts, which is Passover, right? One thing we need to understand is um, Yeshua was not establishing the Eucharist. If you don't know what the Eucharist is, the Eucharist is the communion um, ceremony. This is something that came about uh, at the time of the, Ro uh, the Roman Catholics after Constantine and so the early believers did not do this. They kept the Passover Seder. And when Yeshua said, when you do this, remember me, Paul re reiterates this in 1 Corinthians, um, the same thing. They weren't talking about every Friday when you do um, communion like the Catholics do, that every time you do that, remember me. No, this is a misconception and misunderstanding with most Christians today. This was a very Jewish uh, Hebrew uh, uh, feast. And so Yeshua was taking um, this particular one, because you could see in the Brit Hadashah that there were several occasions where Yeshua did not go into the city during the feast, because it was not yet his time. But on this particular feast, which was Passover, and you find in Matthew 26, and Luke, and in Mark, the same account that um, Yeshua was honored coming into the city. He was fulfilling prophecy. Hosanna, Hosanna, did they sing to him as they laid down palms, proclaiming him a hero and a king, riding on the donkey, right? And just within, you know, 24 hours later, these same people had turned on him. How is that? How is that? You guys, some of them walked with him for three and a half years. Many of them that were in that crowd had, had been in his ministry and seen the things that he had done, the miracles he had performed, Lazarus being raised from the dead. And they're laying down palm uh, branches before him as he's coming into the city. And then 24 hours later, he's our worst enemy. They're spitting on him. They're calling him all kinds of names. And all the while, you got this religious spirit that has been conniving and plotting and backstabbing and doing everything they can to silence this person, Yeshua, because of the truth he brought. So we're going to cover that story. I want to go to um, Matthew 26 with you guys and read uh, the story there. And then we're going to read the account from um, 1 Corinthians. So let's go here to Matthew 26. And this is from the ISR, which is the re a restored name version of the scriptures. So verse 1, and it came to be when Yeshua ended all these words, and he said to his taught ones, you know that after two days, the Passover takes place, and the Son of Man, the Son of Adam, is to be delivered up to be impaled. Then the chief priests and the scribes and the elders of the people came together at the court of the high priest, which was called Caiaphas. 
And they plotted to, to seize Yeshua by trickery to kill him. Now, this is, this is a spirit that is within these men, is a religious spirit. And they could not stand him. Imagine that. They're watching him come through the gate, riding on a donkey with their arms crossed, saying to themselves, the audacity of this man. I mean, they despised him. You know what it says in, in Isaiah 53? They, they despised him. I mean, verse by verse, line by line, he's fulfilling these prophecies, you guys. They plotted to seize Yeshua by trickery and kill him. But they said, not at the festival, lest there be an uproar among the people. Why would there be an uproar, you guys? Do you ever ask yourself why that is? Because this is a religious high holy day. And to do what they're plotting to do, these are Hebrews. What they're plotting to do is so wicked, they don't want to be seen. They don't want to be accused of what they're doing. They just want to get away with it. That's what they're doing. And when Yeshua was in Bethel, uh, Beth Aniah, at the house of Shimon, the leper, a woman came to him having an alabaster flask of costly perfume. And she poured it on his head as he sat at the table. Now, you need to understand what is taking place here. She has poured a very costly perfume and anointed him. And this gets under the skin of somebody that's very close to him. And we're going to see something. If you ever wanted to know the law of averages and who is going to be left standing with you, Yeshua is going to establish that statistic very soon. <laughs> we're going to learn together on who's left standing with you. When you got 12 around you, before that 5,000, right? All of them supporting you and loving you and laying down palm, right? And then suddenly, who's left, right? So she is pouring this costly perfume on him and anointing his head because she understands what's about to take place, okay? And when his taught ones saw it, they were much displeased, saying, to what purpose is this waste? Imagine that. This is the Messiah. And they have the audacity to say, this is wasted. This oil wasted on him, right? For this perfume could have been sold for much and given to the poor. See, this comment here seems on the surface a righteous statement, right? But that's not exactly the intent. <laughs> they just wanted the money especially Judas, who controlled the money, who would be the one that the evil one would, would take over and use to betray the Messiah. One, one of the ones closest to Yeshua. How many know that you've got to be a very trusted person to, to handle the money? And Judas did that. Even though uh, Matthew, uh, Matthew was the actual um, money man, the tax collector, and the one that, that did the accounting, that kind of stuff. Um, it, was, it was Judas who, who was the one who held the money, right? This is, this is, a, this is a heavy place to be when, you, when you're entrusted with that kind of um, responsibility, right? So they say, for this perfume could have been sold for much money and given to the poor. However, when Yeshua noticed it he said to them why do you trouble the woman for she has done a good work toward me for you always will have the poor with you but me you will not always have for the pouring of this perfume on my body she did it for my burial she was anointing him because he was about to give his life and this was for his burial Truly, I said to you, uh, say to you, wherever this good news is proclaimed in all the world, this woman has done shall be spoken of her to her remembrance. And even so, as we're talking about it today, 2,000 years later, the words of Yeshua ring true as we are remembering what she did. She honored him. She honored him. 
in a very, I wouldn't say trying moment. That was yet to come, but it was in a, it was a very, it was a very truthful moment. A lot of, a lot was going to be exposed in this dinner. Those who claim to be very zealous for Yeshua. would never leave him or forsake him, would die for him and when it came down to it, was not one of the ones standing with him. There was only one. And I mean, out of his 12, his mother was there, but there was only one, and that was John. John was the only one left standing. That speaks volumes to me right there. Because in many ways, I can relate. In, in, in many of the Bible stories I've found in my life that I can relate on some level. You know, Yeshua was going on the threshing floor, an innocent man, taking on our sin, you and me. He spoke not a word as they accused him, as they spit on him, as they ripped out his beard. He didn't speak a word. Then one of the 12 called Yehuda went forth to the chief priests and said, why would you give me to deliver him to you? And what would you give me to deliver him unto you? And this is Judas. And they counted out to him 30 pieces of silver. From, when, from then he was on, uh, from, excuse me, from then on, he was seeking an occasion to deliver him up. And on the first day, and how many know this is all in Yahuwah's timing, you guys? This was all prophesied. This nothing came out of the blue and the blindsided our Messiah. He knew all of this was going to take place, and yet he, he persevered. He walked through that fire. He endured that threshing floor, my friend, because he knew what was going to happen on the other side. And he said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, teacher says, my time is near. I am to observe the Passover at your house with my taught ones. And the taught ones did as Yeshua, as Yeshua said, it, had ordered them and prepared the Passover. And when evening came, he sat down with the 12. And while they were eating, he said, truly, I say unto you, one of you shall deliver me up. And they were deeply grieved and began to say to him, each of them, Master, is it I? And he said, answering, he is uh, he who has dipped his hand with me in the, dip, in the dish shall deliver me up. And what you need to understand about that particular um, statement that Yeshua makes is they were all dipping into the dish because that is the tradition. But Yeshua was making a statement in this moment to who he was talking to, and I mean in his uh, uh, immediate vicinity, that when he picked up his bread and dipped it in at the same time, Judas did it. He was acknowledging uh, what was taking place. He was telling um, the, the disciples who it was going to be. Indeed, the son of, and I find it interesting that nobody made any comments. Maybe that it was understood that there had to be one among them to fulfill these prophecies. Now I'm just reaching there, but it's just, um, you know, my thoughts on it. Indeed, the son of Adam, as it been written concerning him, see, is what I mean, because they understood that this was written, this was prophesied, that it would be someone who would betray him. But woe to the man by whom the son of Adam is delivered up that it would be good for that man that he had not been born. Imagine that. Imagine you, Having to play that role, that destiny, where you would be the one to betray. It would have been better that you had not been born. And Yehuda, and Yehuda, who had Judas, who had delivered him up, saying, answering, said, Rabbi, is it I? And he said unto him, You have said it. And Judas doesn't seem taken back by this. He just accepts it, right? And as they were eating, Yeshua took the bread and had blessed it, broke and gave to the taught ones and said, take, eat, this is my body. And taking the cup and giving thanks, he gave it unto them, said, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood and the renewed covenant, the, the 
Brit Hadashah, which is mentioned in Jeremiah 31. This is of the renewed covenant. This is how I'm bringing you back, which is the shed of many of the forgiveness of sins. But I say unto you, I shall certainly not drink of this fruit of the vine from now until the day when I drink anew with you in the reign of my father in the kingdom. And having sung a song, they went out to the Mount of Olives. So he has had a, quote, last supper with his disciples. What I submit to you, the, what he's, what's taking place here, Yeshua is having a, <coughs> excuse me, a Passover Seder and teaching his disciples what they had been celebrating for 1,500 years prior to this was all about, which was him. He's saying, this is my body. This is my blood. Now, he is speaking on a sowed level. Sowed in Hebrew means on a very, very deep level. He is not making a literal statement saying that he's, you know, we're vampires. You're going to drink his blood and eat his body. No, that's not what he's saying. He's speaking on a very deep level, as he usually did. And he says to the disciples in another place that the reason for this, when they ask him why, is because it wasn't for all to know what he was talking about. It's cryptic. Then Yeshua said unto them, all of you shall stumble in me in this night. All of them. For it has been written, again, I shall strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered. So when the Messiah is going on the threshing floor, you guys, none of them will be around. It's a lonely place to be, you guys. It's a very painful place to be. And Yeshua endured a literal physical punishment that wasn't even his it was mine it was yours he was literally threshed his flesh was threshed for me and his spirit and he endured and they were scattered they all ran because they had seen, I mean, imagine that. They had seen all these miracles and things that he had done over three and a half years. But yet they had lost their faith, even their zeal. But Peter, who would give his life, right? Now where to be found? Oh, I love you. I love you, Yeshua. Remember, if you've done to, to the least of these, you've done unto me, he said. Where are you? Scattered. But after I have been raised, I shall go forth unto you into Galilee, which is Galilee. And Kepha answering, this is Peter, Kepha answering and said unto him, even if I, even if all stumble into you, I shall never stumble. I'm not going to betray you, Yeshua. I'll die for you. And Kepha said unto him, even if I have to die with you, I shall not deny you. And all the taught ones said the same too. Then Yeshua came with them to a place called Gethsemane. Excuse me. Let me back up. Let me say in 34, Yeshua said unto him, truly I said unto you this night before the cock crows, you shall deny me three times. That's when Peter says, even if I deny, even if I have to die with you, I shall not deny you. Yeshua told him what was going to happen. And he didn't, he's like, no, I would never deny you. But we all know what happened. He did. It came to pass exactly as Yeshua said. And then Yeshua came to the, with them to the place called Gethsemane. And he said to the taught one, sit here a while. Uh, I go over there and pray. And he took with him Kepha and the two sons of Zebedai. And they began to be grieved and deeply distressed. And he said to them, my being is exceedingly grieved even unto death. Stay here and watch with me. In other words, pray with me. And after going forward, a little he fell on his face and he prayed and said, Oh, my father, if it were possible, 
to let this cup pass from me, yet I, yet not as I desire, but as you desire. In other words, not my will, Father, but yours. Your will be done in my life. Has that been your crime? Your will be done in my life, Father, not mine. That's a profound statement. Your will be done. And, it came, and he came to the taught ones and found them asleep. And he said to Capa, so were you not able to watch with me one hour? Watch and pray lest you enter into trial. The spirit indeed is eager, but the flesh is weak. And again, he went away and a second time and prayed saying, Father, if it's possible for this to pass, unless I drink it, let your desire be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. And he left them and went away and prayed a third time, saying the same words. And then he came to his taught ones and said, still sleeping and taking a rest. See, the hour has come near. And the son of Adam is delivered up into the hands of the sinner. And this is something that's really profound here. Because in the critical hours, the closest ones to him, instead of being on watch, instead of being on prayer with him, were asleep. We shouldn't be asleep this late in the game, you guys. We should be wide awake and aware of the things going on and destruction all around us. Steal, kill, and destroy is very real because the enemy knows his time is short. And he will go after the sons of Israel with a viciousness. And we see those spirits manifesting. Rise, let us go. See, he who delivers me up has come near. And while he was still speaking, seeing Judas, one of the twelve, with a large crowd, with swords and clubs, came from the chief priests and the elders to the, of the people. And he who was delivering him up gave him a sign, saying, whoever I kiss, he is he, sees him. So how's that? Shoot, uh, uh, Judah, you're supposed to love him. I mean, it takes me back to like the, the story of Caesar where et tu brute, where, where they're stabbing him in the back. And this, this one comes up to him and kisses him. This is a very intimate thing in the Middle East. This greeting. He uses this intimate greeting to betray the son. That's like a suicide bomber getting right next to you to destroy you. And he who was delivering him up gave him a sign saying, whomever I kiss, he is he, it is he, sees him. And going straight up to Yeshua, not skipping a beat, said, greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him on the cheek. As if it was no big deal, right? Betraying him. And Yeshua said to him, friend, why have you come? Then they came and laid hands on Yeshua and seized him. Yeshua was asking a, a rhetorical question there. Of course, he knew exactly. And look, one of those with Yeshua put out his hand and drew his sword. This was Peter. And striking the servant of the high priest, cut off his ear. And then Yeshua said unto him, return, return your sword to its place. For all those who take, the, take up the sword shall die by the sword. Or do you think that I'm not able to pray to my father now and he shall provide me with more than 12 legions of messengers how then should excuse me how then would the scriptures be filled that this has to be the way again you should going back to the scriptures making reference that this has all been prophesied this has to happen this way for the father's will to be achieved and that's even true in your life and in my life the Father's will will be achieved no matter what others may do or who may betray you or who may try to destroy you. The Father's will will be done. In that hour, Yeshua said to the crowds, 
Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to arrest me? Less than 24 hours before, they're laying down palm leaves and singing praises to him. He says, daily I sat with you, teaching the set-apart place, and you did not seize me. But all this time to, came to be so that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then the taught ones left him and fled. And those who had seized you, Yeshua, led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were gathered together. And, Ke and Kepha followed him at a distance to the courtyard of the high priest, and he went into the, and sat with the servants to see the end. And the chief priests and the elders and all the council seeking false witness against Yeshua to put him to death. False witness to put him to death, but found none. Although many false witnesses came forward, they found none. But at last, two false witnesses came forward, and they said, I am able to destroy the dwelling. He said this. He said that I am able to destroy the dwelling place of Elohim and build it up in three days. This is the biggest accusation they got against him. At a point where he was speaking metaphorically on a very deep level. Sure, remain was silent. He didn't defend himself. He wasn't going to lower himself to that, to that level. His word stood. He was speaking very profoundly, and he was prophesying. And the high priest said unto him, Have you no answer to make? Did these witnesses against you? And Yeshua remained silent. And so the high priest said unto him, to, uh, I put you to oath by the living Elohim that you say to, to us as if you are the Messiah, the son of Elohim. And Yeshua said, you have said it. Besides, I say to you, and uh, from now on, you shall see the son of man sitting at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his garments and saying, he is blasphemed. Why do we need any more witnesses? See, now you have heard his blasphemy. What do you think? And they answered and said, he is liable to death. And they spat in his face and beat him. And the others slapped him, saying, prophesy that was Messiah. Who is the one who struck you? And Kepha sat outside in the courtyard, and a servant girl came to him and said, and you, and, and, and you were with Yeshua of Galilee? But he denied it before them all, saying, I do not know what you say. And as he was going out to the porch, another girl saw him and said to, uh, to those there, and this one it was with Yeshua of Nazareth. But again, he denied with oath, I do not know the man. Imagine that. I mean, Yeshua was being torn apart, and Peter don't want to be 100 mile, miles near him, as if he's got the plague. The very one he just said he would die for that he was loyal to. Now he is running from. And after a while, those who stood by came to him and said to Kepha, truly, are you one of them too? Even your speech gives you away. And they began to curse and swear, saying, I do not know the man immediately. The cock crowed. And Kepha remembered the word of Yeshua who had said unto him before the cock crows, You shall deny me three times. And the going out, he wept bitterly. And morning having come, all the chief priests and elders and other people took counsel against Yeshua and as to put him to death. And having bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. And the end. Yehuda, who had delivered him up, having seen that he had been condemned, repented, returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned and delivered up innocent blood. And they said, what is this to us? You see to it. And throwing down the silver pieces of uh, the 30 pieces, excuse me, and throwing down the pieces of silver in the dwelling place he uh, had, he left 
and went and hanged himself. He was ashamed. He knew he had done wrong to the righteous. And the chief priest took the, third, uh, the silver piece and said, it is not right to put them in the treasury, seeing they are price of blood. It was blood money. So they took counsel and brought them to the potter's field for the burial of strangers. And therefore, the field has been called the field of blood even today. Then was filled, uh, then was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet, saying, And they took 30 pieces of silver and the price of him who was pierced, and of him uh, and of whom they of the children of Israel set a price. And they gave them of the potter's field as you as you who had ordered me. Yeshua stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Are you the sovereign of the Yehudim, which means are you the king of the Jews? And Yeshua said, you have said it. And he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, and he answered not. And then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how much the, uh, they witnessed against you? And he did not answer him, not one word. So the governor wondered much. And at the festival of the, uh, of the governor, used to release the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And they had well-known prisoner called Barabbas. And they were assembled, and Pilate said to them, Whom do you wish I released you? Barabba or Yeshua, who is called Messiah? For he knew that because of the envy they delivered him up. Pilate knew what was going on. He knew this was a conspiracy. And he was sitting on the judgment seat with his wife, saying to him, Have none at all to do with this righteous man, for I have suffered much today in a dream because of him. And the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds, and they shook, and they should ask for Barabbas and destroy Yeshua. And the governor answered and said unto them, Which one of uh, the two do you wish I released? And they said, Barabbas. And Pilate said unto them, What then shall I do with Yeshua, who is called the Messiah? And they said unto him, Let him be impaled or crucified. And the governor said, Indeed, what evil has he done? And they were crying out all the more, let him be impaled. They were bloodthirsty for an innocent man. And when Pilate saw uh, what he was getting, that he was getting nowhere, but rather an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I'm innocent of the blood of this righteous one. He declared it. The, the judge declared he was righteous. You shall see it. And all the people said, his blood be on us and on our children. And my friend, I honestly believe this is why you, you allowed the Holocaust to take place. Because they had themselves called a, a, a curse on themselves. Then he released Barabbas to them, but having Yeshua whipped, he delivered them over to be he to be impaled then the, then the soldiers and the governor took Yeshua into the court and gathered the entire company of soldiers around him and having stripped him put the scarlet robe on him and and plated a crown of thorns they put on his head and a reed in his right hand and they kneeled down and before and mocked him saying greetings sovereign of the Yehudim, the king of the Jews spitting upon him and they took the reed and struck him in the head and when they had mocked him, they took the robe off him and put on his put on his own garments on him and led him away to be impaled. And as they were going out, they found a, a man of Serene, Shimon, uh, uh, Shimon by name, and they compelled, compelled him to bear his stake. And when they came to the place called Golgotha, that is to say the place of the skull, they gave him wine mixed with bile to drink or, or vinegar. And after tasting, he, he, he would not drink it. And having impaled him, they divided his garments and casting lots that they might be filled, that it might be fulfilled. That was spoken by the prophet. They divided my garments among them, and from my clothing they cast lots. I mean, to the T, prophecy was being fulfilled. And sitting down, they guarded him there, and they put over his head the written charge against him. This is Yeshua, the son of the, the sovereign of the Yehudim. The two robbers were impaled with him, on the, one on the right and one on the left. And those passing by were blaspheming him, shaking their heads and saying, you who destroy the dwelling place and build it up in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of Elohim, come down from that stake. 
He trusted in Elohim. Let him rescue him now from the desires of him. For he said, I am the son of Elohim. And also the robbers who were, were impelled with him reviled him, saying uh, the same. And from the sixth hour, there were, was darkness all over the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Yeshua cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, Lama, Shabbatani. That is, my El, my El, why have you forsaken me? And you guys, he was quoting scriptures, and it comes from Psalm 22. It's a Psalm of David. And from those standing there, having heard, said, this one calls out to Eliyahu. And immediately one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with a sour wine and on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, leave it. Let us see if Eliyahu comes and saves him. And Shua cried out again with a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And see the veil of the dwelling place, which was in the temple, the Holy of Holies, was torn from top to bottom. If you recall earlier in the story, the high priest did something very similar. The high priest ripped his garment and therefore uh, relinquishing his priesthood, in other words. And I submit to you that when Yeshua fulfilled the prophecy and the requirement of our bondage to death, that Yahuwah did the same thing by ripping the garment of the, of the Holy of Holies from top to bottom. Because that particular way of the temple had been fulfilled in what Yeshua did. Now we're moving into something else. It's another teaching in the order of the Mechizeldeck. It's a whole other teaching on that. But what was done here, Yeshua was fulfilling something. Now he had, he was a high priest. And he was who we came to. You see, he breached the gap. We were separated from the Father. And that is why he came and fulfilled every one of the prophecies he did. And we'll come and fulfill the remainder ones. And the probability of any one human being doing that is so astronomical and so impossible that it screams that Yeshua must be the Son of the living hell. It's impossible. And the tombs were open and many bodies of the set apart ones who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went to the set apart city and appeared to many. And when the captain of those with him who were guarding Yeshua saw the earthquake and all that took place, they feared exceedingly, say, truly, this was the son of Elohim. And many women who followed Yeshua from Galilee attending him, were there, watching from a distance. And among them were Miriam of Magdala, and Miriam, the mother of Jacob and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. And when evening came, there came a rich man from uh, Ramathim, and Joseph, who himself also became a taught one of Yeshua. And he went to Pilate and asked for the body of Yeshua, and then when Bali commanded and then Pilate commanded the body to be given. And having taken the body of Joseph, wrapped it in clean linen. And laid it in his new tomb, which he had hewn out of the rock. And he rolled a large stone against the door of the, the tomb and went away. And Miriam and Mag of Magdalene was there. And the other Miriam sitting in the opposite of the tomb. And on the next day, which was after the preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered to Pilate, saying, Master, we remember, while he was still alive, how that deceiver said, after three days I am raised. Command then the tomb be safeguarded until the third day, unless his taught ones come by night and steal him away, and should say to the people, he was raised from the dead, and the last deception shall be worse than the first, right? So Pilate said to them, you have a watch, go, safeguard as you know how. And they went and safeguarded the tomb, sealing the stone and setting the watch. Matthew 28, 28 now after the Sabbath, toward the dawn on the first day of the week, 
Miriam, son of Magdalene, and the other Miriam came to the tomb. And see, there was a great earthquake for the messenger of Yahuwah came down from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. And his appearance was like lightning and his garments was white as snow. And the guards trembled for fear. He came like dead men. And the messenger responded saying to the women, do not be afraid for I know that you seek Yeshua who was impaled. And he is not here for he was raised he has said, come see the place where the master lay and go quickly and say to his taught ones that he was raised from the dead. And see, he is going before you to Galilee and you shall see him. See, I have even told you. And they come and they left the tomb quickly in fear and great joy and ran to report to his taught ones. And they were going to report to his taught ones. See, Yeshua met them saying greetings. And they came and held him by the feet and did bow to him. And Yeshua said to them, do not be afraid. Go and report to my brothers and go to Galilee. And they shall see me there. And while they were going, some of them of the watch, having gone into the city, reported to the chief priest all that took place. Imagine what they thought. And when they came together in the elder, and the elders, taking counsel and gave, eat, uh, gave enough silver to the soldiers, saying, Say that as taught ones that came in the night and stole them while they were away. Listen, they were trying to manipulate this thing even to the end and trying to deny what was taking place. Let me, let me tell you something. You are not going to deny Yahuwah, his glory in what he is doing and his divine purpose in a, in a particular, anyone's story, anyone's life. But in this particular one here, the son of man, Yeshua, who is coming to fulfill the word to the T was not going to be usurped, was not going to be thwarted by the wicked ones. Hallelujah. And if this should be reported to the governor, we shall win him over and keep you out of trouble. And having taken the silver, they did as they were instructed, and the account was widely spread among the Jews. To this day, even to this day with Jews in Judah, they deny that in, in even in their writings, even though all of the accounts is there in the Tanakh, uh, uh, in the Talmud, the three hour eclipse, the damage that was done to the to the temple, and even more detail there's not there in the in the Brit Hadashah. We can see in the Talmud the very day that Yeshua gave his life, and and even after when he was resurrected, um, <laughs> you could still see it there, right? But there was a concerted effort and a conspiracy to conceal this. So don't, don't put too much into the, the Talmud, okay? Because they did kind of tweak this story and, and gave their own, right? And they denied, even to this day, that Yeshua rose from the dead. But we do have accounts from more than 500 witnesses and those that saw others come out of the grave that it took place, and I believe it. I believe it. And the 11 taught ones went away to, Gal to Galilee, to the mountain which Yeshua, excuse me, Yeshua had appointed for them. And when they saw him, they bowed down, but some doubted. Even after resurrect, can you imagine that? Even after the resurrection, they seen this man ripped to shreds, put to death, and now he's alive, and they still doubt it. And Yeshua came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make taught ones of all nations, immersing them in the name of the Father. What? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the set apart spirit, teaching them to guard all I have commanded you. And see, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. And folks, that is basically, as we saw Yeshua tracking the others, uh, who are counting this scripture being fulfilled Yeshua had the victory hallelujah aren't we thankful for that that we got victory in him that we've got a a, a an atonement that we have an, a a a bridge that has been reestablished to the father 
You see, he, he bridged that gap that we have. He became our high priest, our way to the Father, if you will. He said, no man come to the Father except by me. That's what he meant. But make no mistake about it. It's to the Father. That's who we pray to. Hallelujah. Thank you, Yeshua, for what you've done for us. And we honor you in this season of the Passover. And we remember your sacrifice and what it's all about. And that you indeed were and are actively fulfilling the word. And I'm so thankful you are. I trust in you. And I thank you for what you're doing in my life. Hallelujah. Friends, I'm going to end it here. Instead of going on to uh, 1 Corinthians, we'll do that in another uh, another teaching. I'm feeling led that this is where we should end it right here. I just want you to know that I love you and I thank you for standing with me and praying uh, for the best in my life. For those of you that are that are truly friends and truly brothers, you know, I said before that Yeshua established the statistic for us. And when it comes down to it, and you can probably find this in your own life, that when things get hard and things get really, really bad, and if you look around, it's going to be one out of 12 that's going to be there with you. And that was John. John was standing there at the foot of the cross and never left Yeshua's side. And I truly believe this is why we see a different story with John and his outcome. He gave us the book of Revelation. He lived a long life and didn't suffer the kind of death the others did. I believe you who honored him in that, that he never wavered. And you guys, I want to say something about my John in my life. And that happens to be Peter Michael Martinez. That when I was on the, when I've been on the threshing floor and I looked around, it was Peter. That was there for me. And let me say something about that. We were at odds until he came to me to rescue me. And in in one of the lowest points of my life, lost 50 pounds. I'm dying. And somebody that I was at odds with, he was not at odds with me, came with love and rescued me. And I just wanted to honor him in that. I see what's going on here currently with uh, some of the, the people that like to go behind the scenes. And let me just say this, folks, if you've got somebody messaging you, saying, let me tell you this and let me tell you that, enemy in the camp, you need to examine that spirit and the fruit of that tree. It's gossip. It, it's a lying tongue. There's so much to that that, it, that is wicked and evil that is per- masquerading as a righteous spirit. For what cause? you have to go and destroy someone when you have no idea what you're talking about, no evidence, and you actively go pinpointing members of another ministry to try to destroy relationships, that is an evil, wicked spirit, and you should examine the fruit of that tree, my friends, and that's all I'm going to say on that. May you who will bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you. I love you. I'll see you in the next video. Shalom, shalom. Until the next time.